Welcome to yet another physics video. In this uh, tutorial video we'll be looking at the concept of total resistance. And as you can see in this screen here, every possible circuit you can imagine, no matter how complicated, can be replaced or represented by a single resistor. So in this diagram we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine resistors, which can be effectively replaced by one single resistor. And we refer to that as the total or effective resistance. Let's look at an example. We have here between point A and B a series circuit. This is just one section. It could be a battery, it could be connected to something else. In order to work out the effective or total resistance, and what I mean by that is what single resistor can I use to replace these three, I simply add the individual components together. So the equation is the total resistance is the sum of the first resistance plus the second plus the third. So let's fill that in. We take 10 ohms for the first resistor, 30 ohms for the second, and 20 ohms for the third. We add them together and we can say that the total or effective resistance of this circuit is 60 ohms. We have now a parallel circuit. We know it's parallel because current travels from position A and there's two branches it can take. Parallel circuits use a slightly more complex equation to working out the total or effective resistance. To work out the total effective resistance of this circuit, we take the first resistor and we take the reciprocal raised to the power of negative 1, effectively 1 over 10 that is. And we add to that the reciprocal of resistor 2. So we have 1 over 10 plus 1 over 40 and then we take the reciprocal of that particular sum, which gives us a total resistance or effective resistance of 8. So a 10 ohm and a 40 ohm placed in parallel can be replaced or represented by a single 8 ohm resistor as its resistance that is the total or effective resistance. So look at this, we've now got a triple branch. Here we have the reciprocal or inverse of R1 which is 20 ohms to the negative 1 plus 30 ohms to the negative 1 plus 60 ohms to the negative 1. And when we take the inverse of all three of those sums, we find that the total or effective resistance of this three branch circuit with 20, 30 and 60 ohms respectively is 10 ohms. Let's look at a combination circuit. We can see here we have two parallel branches, but within each branch there are two resistors in series. Yet again, this can be re represented as one single or total effective resistance. Step by step, looks at the top branch first. The top branch is combining the 200 ohm and the 300 ohm resistor. We put those in and we end up with an effective resistance in the top branch of 500. Now let's consider the bottom branch. 100 plus 400. That gives us an effective branch resistance of 500 ohms. Now as you can see, that more complicated looking circuit on the left is replaced by two parallel branches, each of 500. We can now analyze those and simplify that using the parallel resistance equation. So the reciprocal of 500 plus for the second resistor the reciprocal of 500 and we take the reciprocal of that sum. I think that gives us an answer of 250. So this parallel series combination with 200 and 300 in the first branch and 100 and 400 can be effectively represented by a total resistance of 250 ohms. Let's have a look I think at our final example here where we have two parallel components and we want to represent that as a single resistance as well. So our first branch we have a 400 and 100 in parallel we'll put that in our equation 400 to the power of negative 1 plus 100 to the power of negative 1, the sum of which all to the power of negative 1 gives us an answer of 80 ohms. The 400 and 100 together in parallel has a total or effective resistance of 80 ohms. Let's look at the second parallel branch. We have a 30 to the power of negative 1 plus a 20 to the power of negative 1, all to the power of negative 1, which is our equation for a parallel branch, and clearly this is parallel. We do our sums and this ends up being a resistance of 12 ohms. Now quite simply we've got 80 ohms plus 12 ohms. We can simplify that by adding them together because they're now in series and finding 
the effective resistance to be 92. So this combination here can be represented as 92 ohms. I hope this has given you some clarification in terms of how we can work out effective resistance, also known as a total resistance, for both series and parallel circuits, and series within parallel and parallel within series, what we'd call a combination circuit. Stay tuned for more physics videos, and thank you for watching.